Over in Paris, South Korean archers have once again proven they are the best, clinching a third straight gold medal in the men's team event. President Yoon song yeol says he will visit the Czech Republic soon for talks over the country's nuclear power project with South Korea, as he calls for the need to set up a related legal basis for policy consistency. The cabinet today approved launching a strategic command to strengthen ROK U.S. integrated extended deterrence amid increasing nuclear and missile threats from North Korea. It's July 30th, 6 p.m. in Seoul. This is News Center. Thank you for joining us. I'm Yoon Jung Min. Over at the Olympics, the South Korean men's archery team followed the women's team by also winning gold. And in judo, a silver medal was added in the women's event. Our Chesu Young has a roundup. South Korea once again proves its dominance in archery. The men's archery team on Monday stood at the top of the podium for the third consecutive Olympics in team events. The trio of Kim Woo-jin, Kim Jae-dok, and Lee Woo-seok won against France with a set score of 5-1. to one. They finished off the game in the best way possible with all three shooting perfect tens in the final set. Following the women's team having won gold at the 10th Olympics in a row, going back as far as the 1988 Seoul Games, the men's team are creating a winning streak of their own. It's also the 101st gold medal for South Korea in Olympic history. In judo on Monday, the judoka Homimi won silver medal in the women's under 57 kilogram event. Ha lost to Canada's Christina de Gucci in the final after receiving her third penalty warning during sudden death. However, she became the first medalist for the Korean judo team in Paris and the first judo medal for the team since the 2016 Rio Olympics. She is a descendant of the Korean independence activist Hosok and was born and raised in Japan by a Korean father and a Japanese mother. Following her grandmother's dying wish to compete under the South Korean flag in Paris, she became the second best female judoka in the world in her weight category. 19 year old pistol shooter Oh Ye Jin, who was Team Korea's first female gold medalist of the Paris Olympics, couldn't add to her medal haul on Tuesday. In the 10-meter air pistol mixed event, Wu and her partner Lee won ho advanced to the bronze medal match by finishing fourth in the qualifiers, but then lost to India by a score of 16 to 10. Che Su-hyung, Arirang News. President Yoon song yeol sent congratulatory messages to each of the 14 South Korean athletes who have won medals in the past three days of the 2024 Paris Summer Olympics. The president sent messages to each athlete as soon as they won the medal. To the women's archery trio who won the 10th consecutive gold, he praised them by saying the whole nation will remember the glorious moment of the golden era's soaring high. And to Kim Ji-hyun, who won the very first medal for the country in France in the 10-meter air rifle mixed team event, he paid respects to her for achieving an excellent result while both training and caring for her child. Staying with the Olympics, the men's triathlon, which was originally scheduled for Tuesday local time, has been postponed until Wednesday morning, right after women's triathlon, due to concerns over water quality in the Sun River. According to World Triathlon, the water quality levels were still not acceptable along certain parts of the course because of the heavy rainfall last week, making the river unsafe for swimming. The Paris Olympics organizers said on Tuesday they are confident that water quality will return to below limits before the start of the triathlon competitions. On the second week of Olympics, marathon swimming is also scheduled to be held in the Seine River. Speaking at a cabinet meeting today, President Yoon focused on revitalizing the nuclear power industry and setting up related legal bases among many issues, as the country is set to work with the Czech Republic on the latter's nuclear energy project. Or Kim Do-yeon has the details. 
At the first cabinet meeting following South Korea being selected as the preferred bidder for the Czech Republic's nuclear energy project, President Yoon Suk-yeol said on Tuesday he wants to lay a strong foundation to build on from this for more projects around the world with a special law dedicated to the industry. 원전 산업 지원 특별법을 제정하고 원전 생태계 복원과 수출 지원 정책을 더욱 강력하게 그리고 일관되게 추진해서 앞으로 제3, 제4의 수주가 이어지도록 다 함께 노력합시다. The project, he says, was only possible as the current administration had chosen to foster the industry after the former administration had declared an exit from nuclear power. And the news, he says, has allowed South Korea to have a strong footing in the global nuclear reactor market. This new project is worth 24 trillion Korean won, or 17.4 billion U.S. dollars for two new reactors at the Dukovany nuclear power plant. President Yoon also said he will be visiting the country, quote, as soon as possible to discuss with his Czech counterpart a successful completion of the contract signing while discussing expanding cooperation between the two countries as a whole. In the meantime, President Yoon also explained that the new tax revision proposed by the government last week focuses on boosting the economy and supporting the lives of citizens through lowering corporate tax rates and expanding investment tax credits. 기업의 투자가 늘어야 일자리가 늘고 경제의 온기가 돕니다. 국가 전략 기술에 대한 세제 혜택을 연장하고 투자를 늘린 기업에 대해 법인세 감면 혜택도 확대할 것입니다. The tax revisions also include expanding tax-free inheritance from the current 50 million Korean won to 500 million, or around 360,000 U.S. dollars. Yoon said the current system does not reflect the economic status of the nation. And so he had requested that the National Assembly discuss the proposed changes. However, the opposition that parliament is unlikely to accept all the changes, and this remains a hurdle for the government. Meanwhile, wrapping up the meeting, President Yoon also reminded everyone to take all necessary measures to combat disasters such as heat waves, typhoons and floods. As South Korea is currently under heat alerts following weeks of monsoon rains, he called on relevant agencies to ensure there were no casualties. Kim Do-yeon, Arirang News. Now, against the backdrop of potential partnership on nuclear energy, our Oh Soo-young sat down with the Czech ambassador to South Korea to discuss what this cooperation means for bilateral relations. South Korea and the Czech Republic's nuclear power cooperation could lead to a robust value-based alliance to strengthen economic and energy security in the heart of Europe. That's according to Czech ambassador to South Korea, Ivan Yancharek, speaking to Arirang News. The diplomat congratulated Toll on being selected as the preferential bidder to build two nuclear power plant units as part of the Czech Republic's largest ever national project. So, first of all, it was the quality of the offer. That was why the KHNP was given this chance, you know, to build the reactors. Second is that there is a already an experience with the Koreans investments in Czechia. Uh, we've been strategic partners since 2015 and it means you know that there we are already in a, in a good relationship and we know each other. We are like-minded countries, we are democratic countries. So that was why that's the uh, reason number two why KHNP was chosen. And third, I think you know that uh, but it's more on a light note, you know, I think you know it's a good connection and uh, and then there is a good relationship between our two countries. He further noted the personal efforts of the South Korean leader in backing the consortium led by Korea Hydra and Nuclear Power. Yoon met Czech Prime Minister Petra Fiala three times on the sidelines of international events and sent a letter describing the potential for future cooperation. If the heads of governments or heads of states are personally involved, you know, in those uh, in those decisions, you know, it seems it's not only one uh, can, one uh, one project of one company, but it's rather you know, it's a project for whole country, and that was really important for us as, as well to see, you know, that there is not only one or two um, companies which are looking at the, at the possibility to sell something, but it's rather you know that we will develop, you know, a lasting and very intense cooperation between Czechia and Korea, South Korea.
Yunnan Fiala will meet in Prague later this year to build on the momentum as the Czech Republic also looks to build a nuclear energy hub for Europe. Last year, it struck up the European Nuclear Alliance with 10 other EU states, including Bulgaria, Croatia, Finland, France, the Netherlands and Sweden. When the President Yoon will be coming to Czechia in September, it will be the reflection of the decision and uh, of the decision of the preferential bid and the possibility actually to pro promote the nuclear industry not only in Czechia but as well in the whole Europe because this is really uh, something uh, which we are which we are aiming at. Uh, Czechia is um, founding its uh, its base uh, has a base for its nuclear industry in uh, for its energy mix into the nuclear industry, but as well the other European countries are looking for that, and we are hoping you know that uh, together with uh, South Korea we can create a European hub you know for further uh, uh, for further development of the nuclear energy in the whole European Union and Europe. It's very important for us, you know, because next year uh, or next uh, years there will be uh, definitely some new tenders about the nuclear blocks, you know. In in that sense, you know, we have to create, you know, Korean Czech alliance and actually and move forward. Ahead of President Yoon's visit to the Czech Republic, the two governments are eyeing the potential for greater cooperation in energy, industry, science and technology amid ongoing trade uncertainties and geopolitical complexities around the world. Jan Tarek said that the two manufacturing economies could collaborate in areas like electric vehicles, given the presence of Hyundai Motors in the Central European country, as well as in semiconductors, machinery for renewable energy and pharmaceuticals. What measures can both countries uh, undertake to increase their uh, supply chain resilience, their economic security going forward? I am sure that uh, if the KHNP is successful in Czechia, that it will be a possibility to open up you know, to the rest of the European and other markets. Uh, uh, in that sense, you know, that will give us a security on the supply chain of energy. If we are then talking about the semiconductors, this is another way you know, how, to, how to actually make our supply chain more resi resilient you know, and more resistant uh, to the possible uh, disturbances in the world. And the uh, third one, and I didn't mention it as one of the important areas of cooperation, is the health and farm sector, uh, uh, the pharmacy sector. Because today the, the medicines and uh, the, the health issues, you know, one of the important things, you know, for our societies which are aging and so actually so we are need you know in a in a in a, in a good supply of the medicines and uh, pharmaceutical products uh, in our countries and this is the areas where we can really cooperate next year's hold in prague will mark 10 years of their strategic partnership and 35 years since they established bilateral relations in 1990. Young news Shifting years, a strategic command will be established within the air in southern Seoul to strengthen deterrence against North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. Our Kim jong shil explains. At the cabinet meeting held on Tuesday morning, a motion was approved to establish a strategic command. The new command will integrate and operate the military strategic assets to deter attacks from nuclear weapons or other weapons of mass destruction. According to the Defense Ministry, the command will operate under the supervision of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and it will work closely with the ROK U.S. Combined Forces Command. Moving forward, the Strategic Command will conduct joint exercises and drills with its U.S. counterparts based on recent joint nuclear deterrence and operations guidelines signed by the two countries. Initial plans include deploying units specializing in missile warfare, cyber operations and drones. The Defense Ministry plans to increase personnel in the latter half of the year and aims to complete the construction of facilities and control systems at Nam Taeryong in southern Seoul, where the Capital Defense Command is located. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. Defense Minister Shin Wan-shik believes North Korea may conduct a seventh nuclear test to coincide with the U.S. presidential election in November. Moon hye has more on his thoughts. North Korea may be planning a nuclear test near the time of the presidential election in the United States, according to South Korea's defense minister in a recent interview. 
On Monday, Bloomberg published its interview with the Minister of National Defense, Shin won sik during his visit to Tokyo for a trilateral security cooperation meeting with South Korea, the U.S. and Japan. As well as discussing the deal between the three countries to standardize the tracking of North Korean missiles and other gains in security cooperation, he stated that Pyongyang has completed preparations for a nuclear test. North Korea always does something very provocative, such as an ICBM or nuclear test, uh, before a U.S. or South Korean election. Uh, that is, except when they don't. Despite past summits between Kim Jong-un and former U.S. President Donald Trump, the regime has been critical of the Biden administration and ignored calls to resume denuclearization talks. The current Republican candidate has frequently mentioned Kim in recent campaign speeches, suggesting that he will improve relations if he wins re-election. However, Pyongyang state-run news agency stated that North Korea does not care which administration takes office in the U.S. If, if President Trump was willing to cancel exercises and the rotational deployment of nuclear-capable assets, uh, then they may be willing to have another summit. Uh, and then they might, might dangle uh, an offering of... The last nuclear test by North Korea was in 2017, and the regime is estimated to have 80 to 90 warheads, with ambitions to increase that number. Defense Minister Shin also said that South Korea, the U.S. and Japan have enhanced real-time data sharing on missile launches since December, with standard operating procedures almost finalized. Additionally, Shin highlighted North Korea's military cooperation with Russia, which includes arms transfers of 12,000 containers in total to support Russia's efforts in Ukraine. Shin's visit to Japan marks the first by a South Korean defense minister in 15 years, reflecting improved relations and enhanced security cooperation under President Yoon Suk-yeol. Moon Hye-ryeon, Arirang News. Host of broadcasting bills spearheaded by opposition lawmakers have been passed by the parliament. The ruling party says it'll ask the president to veto those four bills. Our National Assembly correspondent Yi who has the latest. The National Assembly on Tuesday passed the last of the four opposition-led broadcasting bills following a six-day filibuster launched by the ruling People Power Party. At around 9 in the morning, the opposition unilaterally approved what's been dubbed the EBS bill after the Public Broadcaster Educational Broadcasting System. All of the 189 lawmakers present at the session gave their approval after the PPP representatives walked out in protest. Even if the Democratic Party repeats its deluge of legislations using their large size, our push to normalize public broadcasting will continue. The four broadcasting bills are revisions to existing broadcasting acts that aim to alter the structure of public broadcasters in the country and reduce government influence on them. The bills aim to increase the size of the board of directors of broadcasters KBS, NBC and EBS and grant journalism and broadcast societies the right to recommend potential board members. They also call for a change in the Korea Communications Commission's decision-making process by requiring more approvals from internal members to pass a motion. The four broadcasting bills consist of the three broadcasting bills passed by the previous 21st National Assembly and one more added bill regarding the installation of the KCC. When the main opposition Democratic Party tabled the first of the four bills on Thursday, the PPP launched a filibuster that would in total last for approximately 111 hours. The opposition has since ended each debate 24 hours after its launch through a vote, passing one bill at a time according to parliamentary rules. The PPP floor leader Chu said the party will ask President Yoon sang yeol to veto the four bills. If the president rejects them, the bills will return to the National Assembly for a revote, which would then require a majority attendance and at least two-thirds approval. Yoon had rejected an earlier version of the broadcasting bills last year. 
Later Tuesday, an official at the presidential office told reporters that its stance is that the ruling and opposition should reach an agreement to come up with an improvement and that their final decision will be made considering this. Lee si Arirang News. The Seoul Bankruptcy Court on Tuesday froze the assets and debts of Timon and Wimi Price, the e-commerce platforms of Singapore-based Q10. The court is currently in the process of determining whether a court-led debt restructuring for the two marketplaces should be permitted following their filing for receivership the previous day. They have been unable to repay vendors operating on their platforms due to a liquidity crisis faced by their owner Q10. Following the court's decision, the two firms are prohibited from disposing of their assets as well as repaying debts until a decision is made on restructuring. As part of the review, the court has scheduled a hearing with the CEOs of the two firms on Friday. In other news, there is a saying the greatest treasures are often hidden in the most unexpected places. If you are looking to discover hidden talent in Asia's art scene, this is a place you might want to explore. Our culture correspondent Song Yijin has a preview. This bright red building used to be the home of the National Theatre Company of Korea. Although it's currently closed for renovation, it has temporarily reopened as a gallery to showcase the work of promising young artists in Asia. This is the 2024 Asian Students and Young Artists Art Festival, or ASIOF, Korea's largest arts festival for emerging artists. This year, the festival is part of something even bigger. This year, it is launching the Culture Ministry's first Korea art festival, which officially starts in September. This festival puts ASIOF alongside the Gwangju and Busan Biennale's Seoul Art Week, Kiev Seoul and Freeze Seoul. I have high hopes for young artists as their work tends to be freer, more experimental and more fearless. This exhibition might give us a glimpse into the future of our art industry 10 or 20 years down the line. For many participants, this festival marks the start of their professional journey as artists. The first step is always special, but ASIOF offers an even more unforgettable experience. These young talents handle everything themselves, from setting up their work on these white walls to selling and shipping their pieces to buyers. The process can be challenging, but it is a memorable chapter of their careers. At my first Asia, I sold a painting of a turtle. The buyer had a pet turtle that passed away between buying my work and receiving it. They said they would cherish the painting, which touched my heart and made me feel they found the right home. That experience inspired me to participate again this year. Art fairs like this give us a chance to sell our work and get motivation. For visitors, it's a chance to discover hidden talent and purchase unique pieces that connect with them at affordable prices. I majored in art at university, but I didn't end up becoming an artist. Even so, I still have a strong passion for art. The pieces by these young artists are definitely bolder in terms of ideas and colors. I decided to buy a piece that resonated with the quiet, tranquil lifestyle I want. The 2024 Asia runs at the old Baekchang Theater near the Seoul train station until August 25th. Song Yujin, Arirang News. This morning, the official end of rainy season was declared. This rainy season was longer than usual in the southern parts of the country and some are shorter in the central areas. However, the intensity of the rain was the harshest. After the rainy season, we'll see some scorching heat. 
For the time being, heat waves and tropical nights are likely to get worse. With a heat wave warning is being issued in most parts of the country, the heat will not stop all day tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, heat from tropical nights will continue at 26 degrees Celsius in Seoul, and there's a possibility that, that Gangneung will have nighttime temperatures of 29 degrees. Morning will start off at 25 to 27 degrees around the country. Highs will be topping out at 34 in Gwangju and Jeju, Daegu and Gyeongju, 36 degrees. There's a possibility of some rain in the Seoul metropolitan area and western parts of Gangwon-do province on Friday. That's all for Korea. Here are the weather conditions around the world. That is News Center for tonight. Thank you for watching. A panel session coming up.